Hello everyone. Welcome to today's video, where today we shall discuss a major event happening in the skies, and that is the event of the entry of Aten Ra, the sun, into the sign of Aries, sidereal Aries. This marks the beginning of the natural new year, which begins with the sign of the ram of Aries, and each month is 30 days long until it ends with the sign of the fish of Pisces. So today, Ra, the sun, Aten Ra, enters the ram of Aries, where he's exalted, where the sun, your life force, your Kundalini, your Ashe is the most powerful for the whole year. And the calendar we're using is called the sidereal calendar, not the tropical calendar. That we start on June 21st in our system. So the sidereal calendar is the calendar of virtues. It's how the pharaohs of Egypt would help people to absorb virtues throughout the year. So we have several calendars. We have what's called the sidereal virtue calendar, and it clocks all the sidereal planetary motions and stars, and we time people meditating on star energies to absorb virtues of character. We have the tropical system, which is the seasons system, which begins for us in our system June 21st. That is the ancestor calendar. We have a third calendar called the calendar of Sirius rising. Spedu, Peret Spedet, or Peret Spodu, the heliacal rising of Sirius. That is the calendar of the precise comedic ceremonies throughout the year. It links very heavily to the chakras. They all link to the chakras, but that one in particular has real potent chakra, chakra effect. So today, it's the day for the light to exalt in you. Ra, Aten Ra. Now, in the zodiac, there are two, Sidira zodiac, there are two basic deities that come per sign. So there's the comedic original deity, which I will show you here. The sign of what we call Aries would be originally in the ancient valley of the Nile, Amun Ra because the symbol of the ram is a ram, and Amun's avatar was the ram. So in every sign we have two deities, the master deity and his or her assistant. So the master deity of Aries, if you are a sidereal Aries person, or you have any planet in sidereal Aries, you would actually be Amun-Ra. Secondarily, or the assistant of each sidereal sign, would be a different deity. In this case, it would be this deity here called Herokti, or Mahus, or Herubehudet, these war gods. Okay, so again, in ancient Kemet, Ares was owned by Amun Ra, the hidden fire, the calm fire, assisted by Herkohuti, which means doubly fiery, doubly heated, okay, doubly enlightened. So what happens is now we celebrate the entry of the boat of Ra, called Aten Ra, the sun disk itself, Aten Ra, entering into the sign stars of Amun-Ra. So the sun means what you should choose to do, not have to do. It's the sign where you should choose to be heroic, choose to be virtuous in those ways, and not have to be virtuous. Okay, so let's discuss Amun-Ra. And let me just see if I can get on the screen here an image. Well, I think we won't do that now. Okay, so Amun-Ra means, Amun means hidden. It also means greatly stable. Ah, moon, or ah, men. The word ah means great, and men means stable, steady, stays the course. Ah, men can also mean 
that which is hidden, invisible, unseen. Ra means the life force, the power behind the sun, what we call Ashe or Chi. Um, and Amun Ra means the hidden force. Now, he was a war god. There were many scenes of Amun Ra going to battle, clobbering people's skulls with these maces. Amun represents the highest part of you, your identity. You are Amun. You, he is consciousness. The word Amun means cosmic consciousness, infinite eternal consciousness, awareness, the observer, your identity. You are not a spirit. You are consciousness observing your spirit. We call the spirit Nun. You are consciousness observing the spirit. So we have Amun, cosmic consciousness, cosmic intelligence, infinite intelligence that observes everything. The cosmic thinker, the cosmic mind. And Ra means power, Ashe, energy. It's basically saying Amun Ra is like mind over matter. A focused, steady mind can influence matter. Thought can move energy. So he's actually a god of telepathy, telekinesis, and all those telemental powers. When he binds with Ra, the invisible mind can move energy. And we know that energy equals matter. Therefore, the mind of Amun can move energy. Energy coagulates into matter. Therefore, Amun can move matter as well. So he's a god of great telepathic powers, great genius, and he's very calm, greatly stable, very calm. We're describing warriors, the virtues of a warrior. So in my system, this 30-day block, this 30-day month starting from today, April 14th, 2023, for 30 days, because Ra, Atan Ra moves one degree per day, the boat moves one degree per day, and in 30 days he'll go into the bull. So during these 30 days, it is the Pharaoh's job to remind people of the virtues of Amun-Ra. When you have to go to fight, when you must stand for yourself, go to war, are you Amun, greatly calm? The way to be greatly calm is what's called the Mahabanda breathing method. It's a lot of words I know. But it simply means when you're faced with a stressor, a challenge, an adversity, the first thing you want to do, because Amun also meant the god of wind or of breathing. Okay? And so to be calm, Amen, very stable, very steady, you must have a lot of Amen, which is a lot of breathing. So the warriors had to learn when they're in the middle of battle, of challenge, adversity, be greatly calm in your breath. This method is called the Mahabanda method, or the uh, yeah, Mahabanda. It's simply imagine you were about to get a punch in the stomach, and how you would kind of gird your stomach, you would kind of uh, tense your core to withstand the blow to your gut. That tensing of the gut, the core, is the method of controlling emotional reactions to challenge. So all you do when you have a challenge or a scary thought or a startling event, you just want to kind of inhale through your nose, make your belly what I call pregnant, inhale, like sip in a nice big breath, and then tighten your belly like you're about to be punched and you don't want to get hurt. And you keep your belly tight while you're holding your breath, and you simply press your abdomen back towards the spine while the breath is still tense, like punch ready, punch resistant. Then you inhale again, you relax, release the, the tension of the core. You inhale, and then you tighten again like you're going to be punched. And then you exhale, st keeping the tension as you push your belly back towards your spine. It's so simple. But no emotion can withstand this yoga. It actually de uh, 
declaws any emotional reaction you have. It's so easy, it's so it's cheap, it's free, and it works. Okay, so this is the Amun breathing. The breathing that you may get strength. For example, when you try to lift a heavy object, a heavy chair or a heavy box, what do you do? You bend your knees and you notice when you, you inhale and you, you actually lock your core to help you get that core strength to lift the object. When you lock this core in this Mahabandha Yoga method or natural instinctive method when you're lifting heavy things, when you lift with this core lock, this core tension, you get more strength. So with the chair, you get strength to lift the chair. If it's an emotion, you get strength to overcome the emotion. And you want to work these muscles. There are a bunch of core muscles, and it takes practice. Just practice. When you feel shocked or stunned or afraid or scared, lock those muscles. And then breathe. Exhale as you press the tummy back towards the spine with the muscles still tense, still tense. You relax on the inhale. Goosey, goosey core and then you tighten again and you exhale like that but the tummy stays tense do that five ten times the addiction the emotion the fear the worry the insecurity the uh, shock none of that will affect you okay this is the amun breathing for warriors in the face of trial and adversity okay now you see he has these two tall plumes these plumes represent the two brains of hemispheres of your brain reaching to very high levels of intelligence. Like your brain grew like the cone heads and reaches to high, 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 high levels of awareness. Okay? So they're extended brain hemispheres of great intelligence, reaching for higher intelligence, which you get when you're calm in the middle of a challenge or you're calm while creating something. When you lock that breath in this method of breathing, to face a challenge in adversity with strength, that sun disk, this red sun disk in his feathers, these two feathers, these golden feathers, that sun disk means the mind lights up, the brain becomes enlightened, clear-headed, focused, sharp, bright. You get bright ideas, creative ideas of how to respond to the adversity, how to respond to the challenge. Okay? And the feathers lean backwards they have like a slight tilt because they're leaning towards the north pole star the earth tilts it's not vertical its axis its axis is about 23.5 degrees off vertical that north pole star is the most stable star for a generation it could be for thousands of years actually that star becomes very stable so he's saying always keep your mind Fix on the goal. Stabilize your mind like the North Star is stable. Fix your mind like the fixed North Star. Okay? And that long thing, that long kind of string hanging in the back of his head here represents the mind being in touch with the chakras down the back and the earthly realm. You want to be very lofty but you must also be very practical. You want to be very spiritual because feathers are things of flight. But you also want to be very grounded. You want to get information from the heights of philosophy and from the reality of life. His heka, he has several hekau. One of them is Ong Hung Kshang, which is a third eye heka. Another is Ong Rakshang. Ong Rakshang. Ong Rakshang. It's a evil removing Heka. It's a demon slaying Heka, a bad habit slaying Heka, a fear slaying Heka, or word of power or man mantra. Okay? So, he holds an Ankh, meaning you, you fight to preserve life, not to destroy life. Ankh means life, eternal life. So he's a war god of great intelligence, great mental calmness, stealth, focus, enlightened thinking, stays the course. This is not a wild warrior, a thug, a brigand, okay, a berserker. This is a very calm warrior, very centered. I would say the samurai tradition kind of came from this. 
there's that whole code of honor, behavioral control, cool and steady, thinking your way through the battle, not reacting to the enemy's provocations. This is all very amun. So I've given you the heka. Ong Hong Sheng gives you that intuition to be calm and know how to move through the adversity. And Ong Rak Sheng is the power to strike the enemy, strike the bad habit, strike the fear, and cut its head off. It's a demon slaying heka for sure. Okay? So we want to ask questions. Are you in the middle of challenge, calm? Are you calm? The heka for calmness would be shunting. Shunting, 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 shunting. That is one of Amun's heka. Shunting. This keeps you very calm. You almost laugh at the challenge. Are you trying to attack me? Are you? Do you know who I am? I'm Amun. I'm Amun Ra. Do you breathe? to get mental energy to respond to adversity. That breathing power is the sun disk, that power of holding the breath and getting life force into you. Okay? Do you see how your mind shapes your energy? How your thoughts shape your feelings? How the feathers of Amun's mind shapes the emotional churning of the sun or the energies within you? Okay? So, we move to his assistant, Herokti, doubly flamed one. He of the two flames of wisdom. You notice these warriors of Africa are not dumb thugs. The, the word Heru Kahuti. Heru means time, hour, or hero. Kahuti, Kahu means wisdom, oracles, light, luminosity, and T means double. So we have a hero doubly wise luminous fire. This is an intelligent warrior, not some thug brigand running around amok. He assists Amun-Ra. You must first have Amun-Ra now while Ra is entering the sign of the ram. If you were in Aries rising today, Ra entered your first house. If you are a Pisces rising today, Ra entered your second house. If you are an Aquarius rising today, Ra enters your third house. So this is where you're going to find the challenges. You should choose to battle calmly with good breath, bright mind, focused like the North Pole Star. And Herukohuti says, make sure you close the deal. Make sure you seal the strike. Okay? He's the god of protecting the body from invasion, like the immune system, what we call aha system. Aha means like immunity or war defender, warrior who defends, aha, like a soldier. And what th this part of you, this part of your psychology, this inner warrior, because now we're in the realm of Amun-Ra and his assistant Herokti, these are simply your inner warrior archetypes. They're just your inner warrior. Okay? And I'm describing to you their divine traits. When the inner warrior is at its highest, it sounds like these descriptions of Amunra and Herokti. His heck is Helring. And he makes sure that evil is blocked in the end so good may th thrive and flourish. Herokuhuti or Herokti doesn't, is not a god of war. He's the god of the prevention of war. He does not like making wars. But he will throw down to defend ma'at, divine order, that everyone has the right to live and flourish. Everything in the forest has a right to live and flourish and do its path. So when your rights are being invaded, you're, because you're a woman, you're being attacked for your sex, being sex, uh, the yin sex. If you are gay, if you are bi, bisexual, you're being attacked. If you are Muslim, you're being attacked. If you are um, uh, elderly, you're being attacked. Whatever. Each person is like a unit in a forest. Each individual thing serves the overall ecosystem. And Herokti says, no one has the right to extinct any part of the ecosystem, whether it's the actual forest 
or the human ecosystem of different groups and uh, races and genders and sexualities, you don't have the right to infringe upon women's rights, gays' rights, by bisexual people's rights, um, elderly rights, uh, uh, people who aren't wealthy, the poor, you don't have the right to attack them. So, this next 30 days from today, chant these sounds, please review this video, please share this video, because you have 30 days until next year to work on these virtues. I am the calm, intelligent warrior. My mind controls my actions. I defend the innocent. I stop bullies. I attack my own bad habits this month. I go to war with these words of power and images in my imagination. You see your bad habits. You're drinking, you're boozing, you're lying, you're thieving, whatever you're doing that you know is not right. You know it's not right. Just see yourself clobbering them as animals. Like see your bad habits as a snake or a worm or a fly or an insect or something. And see your Herogohuti and Amunra conquering them, killing them, slaying them, crushing them. Just visualize it. See your drinking problem as a worm or a rat. And see Amunra's beam burn the rat or Herogohuti's sword slice the rat in, in two. And just with the sound, on, or shunting, calm, 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 calm. Uh, for on hung shang to get insight from Amun Ra. On rak shang, I will destroy you. On her ring, I will end this. And just meditate, particularly around noon every day for the next 30 days, because noon is the height of sun or heat. And work on these virtues. Work on becoming Amun Ra. Work on becoming Herokohuti by visualizing yourself acting like them in the imagination against the symbols of your bad habits, the symbols of your oppressor, the symbols of what you know is not good in you. Okay? We're also entering a set of stars known as the Ashwini stars. It's called the Nakshatra, what we call Kabesu or lamps in Egypt, lamps hung in the starry night sky. This nakshatra, kabesu, or um, asterism, a kind of cluster of smaller star groupings, is owned by what's called the Ashwinis. These are called the horses. What I can say to you about the Ashwinis are two things to do. The first thing to do is to do a lot of breathing, This, uh, the next 13 days in particular, from today until uh, the 23rd or 24th of April. Do just simply a lot of, <laughs> like, when you breathe in, tummy gets pregnant, breathe out, tummy gets flat. You're kind of panting through the nose only. <laughs> if you can kind of tell what I'm doing from, from the sound. I'm kind of panting, but I'm, I'm pumping my navel, my abdomen. I'm pumping. Inhaling gets bigger belly. Exhaling goes back to the spine. This is called the breath of fire. The Kulabhati breathing method of yoga. This, because horses have big nostrils, they've taken a lot of air. So when you have the Ashwini horses, it means take a lot of oxygen because the horses, they oxygenate at a very high level. That's why they're so fast, they're so enduring, they're so strong. So every day in the morning, spend a few minutes, maybe three to five minutes with that kind of abdomen pumping, panting only through your nose energy. You will heal things because the uh, Ashwini horses are known for healing. And also during this time, Take care of your health for 13 days. Do the best things for your health for 13 days until April 14th until about April 23rd. Be really super duper healthy person. Poster boy, poster girl for health on wheels, exercise on wheels, yoga on wheels, diet on wheels, meaning good, healthy, wholesome diet on wheels. If you can do it for 13 days, these 13 days, it will stick because heaven supports healing action. So go to your Chinese acupuncturist these 13 days. Go to your massage therapist these 13 days. Make it happen. Just trust me. Just make it happen. Go to your Ayurvedic doctor these 13 days. Go to all your alternative healing preferences and I mean this, book the sessions, book the acupuncture session, book the acupressure session, book the cryo ice session, book the massage, book the pedicure, book the pedicure, uh, manicure, book with the Ayurvedic doctor. B 
be super healthy, super exercising, super stretching. Just pretend this is the, the one time of the year, 13 little days. You're Jack LaLanne. You're a, a great Hatha Yogi Yogi. Okay? If you do this, you're working with nature, with the movements of the stars, and the stars will work with the movements within your life force. So with that, I pray you enjoyed this. Please follow this. I want you all to be healthy. I want you all to have luminosity and strength, like a, have horsepower in your life. And I'm giving you things that are really easy to do. Don't cost any money. Breathing does not cost any money. Okay. The only thing that costs money is buying your vitamins, your food, your whole, your um, organic food. Um, you can take strolls more, uh, go jogging more, go to the gym and swim more, get outdoors more for 13 days. Just pretend you are Mr. Mrs. Super Exerciser. And if you can get yourself out of bed and into action and into great diet and into um, acupressure, acupuncture sessions, yoga sessions, med- massage sessions, meditation sessions, you will be very, very blessed with a lot of life force throughout the next year until April. With that, we thank you so much for being with us. Remember, no matter what happens in your life, always look up. Why? Because you are a star. Duan Hotepul.